Can you imagine that a blockchain could perform a million transactions per second? A million per second? <laughs> well, Cardano is planning to do exactly that. What's up? My name is Caroline and this is Wealth in Progress where you'll learn how to make passive income with cryptocurrencies. In this video, we'll talk about Cardano's TPS, which stands for transactions per second. We'll look at what they can currently perform and how they plan to scale it up in the future to get up to a million transactions or even more per second. Cardano is a proof of stake blockchain platform that aims to be the next Ethereum. The idea is that other projects can launch on top of it. So it basically provides the base infrastructure on which other projects can work on. So Ethereum already does that. The only issue is it's pretty slow right now and also pretty expensive. Right now, new crypto projects often launch as ERC20 tokens, which are the Ethereum tokens for projects to build on top of. And that will soon be possible for Cardano as well, as soon as the Alonso hard fork has been completed and that should, be soon, should soon be done in September. Now, ERC20 tokens are a great thing, but let's look at this. This is what the main issue is. So with both Ethereum and Bitcoin, the fees are currently really high and also they can only process very low amounts of transactions per second. So let's look at this quickly here. So one thing this article says is another similarity between the two is that both of them you operate using a proof of work consensus. So that's how it is right now. And contrary to that, Cardano uses proof of stake. Ethereum will move on to proof of stake eventually as well, but they're not there at the moment. And that's one of the reasons why it can only process so such a limited amount of transactions per second. So let's read on. This means that for both Ethereum and Bitcoin, the verification and confirmation of transactions requires a network wide consensus of nodes. Due to this condition, both of them are slow when it comes to transactions processing. Now the important part comes next. Ethereum is slightly faster than Bitcoin. It normally processes 10 to 15 transactions per second, while Bitcoin processes three to five. So you can see, especially with Bitcoin, it's really limited. Ethereum is a bit further ahead, but still very limited. You can't move, uh, you can't use it as you would with Visa or other centralized transaction platforms that we use at the moment. And especially in a bull market where there are a lot of transactions going on because a lot of tokens and platforms are used, it can get congested really quickly. And that's how you get those gas wars or those congestions where the highest bidder gets through first. And that's why the gas fees can get really expensive really quickly. Now Cardano wants to solve this problem and wants to be much faster and much cheaper. And the way they want to do that is through a layered blockchain. So Cardano's base layer is called Ouroboros. So you can see that here the Cardano consensus protocol is called Ouroboros. So that's basically the base. And now in order to scale up the, the transactions per second, they want to add a second layer that's called Hydra. So this article by Vacuum Labs explains it very well. So let's go through that quickly. Cardano will be composed of multiple layers. The foundational layer is the Ouroboros consensus protocol and thanks to its proof of stake nature provides for a theoretical throughput of, the, of 257 TPS, which is an order of magnitude greater than Ethereum or Bitcoin currently enjoys. So that's what we've discussed earlier with uh, Bitcoin only being at three to five and Ethereum being at 10 to 15 transactions per second right now. So even right now, Cardano would be able to perform many more transactions per second than the other two options, but still quite a bit lower than what Visa can do right, th at right now. So that's what we usually compare it to. So Visa is at a few thousand transactions per second and uh, Cardano would be at 257. Okay, now the next part is discussed here. So it says beyond the Ouroboros base layer, however, Cardano is working on enabling a secondary layer called Ouroboros Hydra which will allow a multitude of parallel state channels to exist that only occasionally need to sync their state with the base layer consensus protocol. Through this approach, thousands of state channels or Hydra heads can exist and each can process up to a thousand transactions per second. When deployed in parallel, this configuration will allow for throughput of up to 1 million transactions per second. Now, the basic idea is that each staking pool can be a Hydra head. And that means if you have a thousand stake pools and each pool can perform a thousand transactions per second, you get a million. Now, this is uh, more or less theoretical at the moment because 
uh, Hydra is expected to be fully running in 2022 and we don't know an exact date yet so this is all still in development and will probably take a little more time until it's fully launching. Now, first of all, we need to wait for the Alonso fork to be fully rolled out and so that uh, other projects can launch on top of the blo Cardano blockchain. And then the next step uh, at some point in the future will be Hydra. So at the moment, it's still a bit theoretical, but this is the capacity of, of the whole uh, scalability for the Cardano blockchain. As I've mentioned earlier, Visa is the current payment network that processes the most transactions and these are a few thousand per second. I think the maximum capacity is about 65,000 but it's rarely used. What's usually used is about a thousand to two thousand transactions per second. So already now Cardano is, is getting close to that with 257 and with a million it would be far far out there so we wouldn't even need that many even if we just had a few stake pools that could perform a thousand transactions per second we would be very far ahead of all the other competitors that are out there right now. Now keep in mind this has been a very simple overview because I don't want to get into all the technical details. I'll leave a few articles in the description if you want to dive deeper. Also leave a comment if you have a question about anything that I discussed in this video today. If you have a specific question maybe I can cover it in a future video so just let me know down, down there. If you like this video hit the like button down below, share with your friends and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!